Hi everybody, welcome to My Big Tidy Up. If this is your first time here, my name's Dee Dee and I'm glad to have you. If you're one of my regular tidy uppers, welcome back and I'm ready to get started today. What we're gonna be doing today, now don't you click off after I say these two words. Deep cleaning. Do not click off. I know when we hear the words deep cleaning, it seems so overwhelming, it seems hard, time consuming, back breaking, but that's not what we're doing today. What we're doing today is what I like to call easy deep cleaning. So easy in fact, you might call it lazy deep cleaning, but that's what I've got in store today. I've got some tips and some hacks that will make deep cleaning so much easier and not a big daunting process like what we're all used to. So thanks for joining me today and let's get tidy. Tip number one, how to clean your kitchen cabinets easy style. Well, we all love having a lot of kitchen cabinets, but nobody likes cleaning them. And we can try to keep up with it, but just through the process of cooking, they're gonna get dirty. And sometimes they just need a good deep cleaning, but who has time for that and who enjoys that? Not me. Well, one way that I found that makes it a little bit easier is to use this. As crazy as it sounds, this is a car detailing glove that I got from Amazon for less than $8 a long time ago. And this is a great product to use to clean your kitchen cabinets. It has two surfaces, and so you can use this to clean. This has a scrubber side, so if I hit something that seems to be stuck on there that I can't get off, I just bend my knuckles down and scrub it. So another great thing about this, and for my left-handed folks, you will really appreciate this, this is ambidextrous and it advertises it as ambidextrous. So it doesn't matter which hand you put it on, it works. And as someone who's left-handed, a lot of times you see really cool products, but they're made for right-handed people. So you can't go wrong with this. And so that's what I'm gonna get started on. Now I'm gonna clean my kitchen cabinets easy style. When I'm cleaning cabinets in the kitchen, I always just use hot water and a little squirt of Dawn dish soap, and it'll cut through any kind of grease or buildup, and it's still gentle on my cabinets. This project really did go fast. It didn't take me long at all. And I don't know about you guys, but sometimes it seems like just getting set up and getting everything ready actually takes longer than the process itself. really aren't even doors they're just faux doors on the other side of the island so they're not even touched by human hands so you would think they really wouldn't have been that dirty but they were Here we go, full disclosure, this is real life. And it hasn't been that long since I cleaned those cabinets, but day-to-day -day use sure does cause some dirty buildup. The kitchen is done. Now I know from this video, you won't be able to tell how clean these actually are, but really the reason why I'm shooting this is so you can see the amount of cabinets that I cleaned. It actually only took less than 30 minutes and I was able to do all of these cabinets all the way around, get the island, and then over where we sit, I cleaned that wood as well. D 
deep cleaning the kitchen cabinets is now complete and it really wasn't that difficult thanks to the detailing glove and I will leave that product information in the description below. Tip number two, how to clean your baseboards and woodwork easy style. Now in a previous video, I did show my preferred method on how to clean my baseboards, and that's using a Clorox wipe and then following it with a fabric softener sheet because once you put a fabric softener sheet on that wood, it tends to not attract the dirt and the dust as much. But since we don't always have time to do that and we don't always wanna get on our hands and knees and do that kind of job, today we're doing it easy style and we'll be using this mop. This is just a basic dollar store mop I'm using. And depending on what I'm cleaning, whether it be dirty baseboards or if I'm just doing some dusting on rails, that'll determine what I put on it. Sometimes I use water and a cleaner, and then sometimes I use a furniture polish. It just depends what I'm cleaning. Number three, deep cleaning our rugs the easy way. Now we all know that probably the best way to clean our rugs would be to hire a professional company to come in and do it for us, but that's pretty time consuming and very expensive. Another option would be is to own our own rug shampoo or borrow one or rent one. However, that still can be expensive and takes a little bit of time. So one option that I do in between shampooings is to do the technique of slow vacuuming. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of this technique or not, but I'm gonna give you a little demonstration today. That's why there's tape on this rug. Now, the rug that I'm standing on is in between the den where we spend lots of our time and the kitchen. So this is a very heavy traffic area. And I really honestly wanna show you the difference that slow vacuuming can make. And it doesn't matter if you have a corded vacuum or a cordless vacuum because I'm gonna demonstrate it with both. And you will see when we think we've got it picked up and that we're vacuuming really well and going over it so fast, there's still more hidden in there. Now it's not the same as having your rugs professionally shampooed, but it is a way to keep your pile up high and get that dirt that tends to bog down our carpets. So let's get started and let's slow vacuum. Okay, this first side I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use with the cordless vacuum. And I'm gonna go ahead and run the vacuum just as I normally would because I want everyone to know that it wasn't staged and that I'm running it just as I normally would. Actually, probably a little more than I normally would. <laughs> This is what I was able to get out by using the vacuum just as I normally would. Now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do the same side, but I'm gonna do the slow vacuum technique. Now it is slow and I'm not gonna speed it up. I will kind of cut to the end, but I want you to see the speed that I actually go. And so I won't make you watch every single pass of this, especially since it's kind of risky. I'm probably gonna fall off the stairs before this is all done. But I just want you to see this is about the speed that I slow vacuum at, and then I'm gonna go and change directions as well. Look what I was able to get out just by doing four simple slow passes with the slow vacuum technique. That was just one pass. And I can assure you, now I'm gonna go the opposite direction and I'm gonna get the same amount again. And remember, this area has already been thoroughly vacuumed before I even started. And 
now for my corded vacuum. I'm gonna use my shark and show you that there's nothing in the canister and I'm gonna run the vacuum over the area and then again, I'll be slow vacuuming. I am constantly amazed at everything I can get out of my carpet just by using the slow vacuum technique and going both directions. I promise you, if you will give it a try, you will be shocked and amazed at all the things that you can get out of your rug that you normally wouldn't get. Next tip, deep cleaning your washer and dryer the easy way. The first thing I'm gonna do is get started on my washer and then I'll tackle my dryer. For the washer, I'm gonna run two cycles. I'm gonna take the first cycle and run it with two cups of white distilled vinegar. And when that cycle is done, then I will run it one more time with hot water with a cup of bleach. Now you can't mix those two things together. They each do different things. The first cycle with the vinegar will take care of soap scum and water buildup. The second one with the bleach will disinfect, but again, you can't run those together. Don't mix those together. So let's get started on that. And then I've got a nifty little tool that will help us get that dryer taken care of. to the dryer. Now the washer is not completely done. It still has 13 minutes left on it, but I paused it and I'll come back to that because I want to make sure I get started and share with you my little trick I use to deep clean my dryer the easy way. Now the inside of the dryer, let's be honest, it stays pretty clean because all we ever put in there are clean wet clothes. So every once in a while, I may take a, a rag with some cleaner and wipe it out. But for the most part, I leave it alone. The problem lies behind the dryer, underneath the dryer, and in that little lint tray. Well, I can take the lint tray out, but it's underneath that, and you can see a lot of that, so you're trying to fish your hand down in there. Well, here is what I use, and here's my little tip. I use this little tool right here that I got from Amazon. It's less than $9, I think. It is wonderful. You just take this, it will attach to your regular vacuum. Doesn't matter if it's corded or if it's cordless. And you attach it and then you can use this and it feeds down underneath there where you can get underneath that lint tray. You can get behind your dryer instead of having to pull everything out. You can take this and go underneath the front of it if you have room. This is a wonderful little tool. It's my little hidden gem trick and I use it all the time. So let's get started. There's no hard assembly. It's just real easy. Just add it to your nozzle and you're good to go. Works like a charm every time. I'll make sure that I leave the product information down below. Now, back to the washer. By the time I've run both cycles, one with vinegar and one with bleach, I usually have everything cleaned out of my washer. Now, occasionally, I will still have a little bit of dirt or buildup on the white rim, and for that, I just wipe it down with an all-purpose cleaner and then take a magic eraser and gently go around the rim to make sure I've got everything off of there. I leave it open to dry and it's complete. Next tip, 
dusting the easy way. Now, it's not like dusting is that hard. It's not rocket science. We don't really enjoy it because it can be time consuming, but it's not hard. We know what we need to do. We take some kind of furniture polish or cleaning product, a small towel, and we're off to the races. Well, there are some things in our home that you just can't use furniture polish or a towel on. And so for those things like lampshades, because we sure wouldn't want to get those wet, or maybe draperies that are high up that you can't take off and launder all the time, here's what I use. I use a lint roller. Works wonderful. It's a quick little hack. It's just run it over it real quick and you'll see it's clean and no trouble at all. Lint rollers have so many uses besides just our clothes. You can use it to do the drapes, to clean your lampshades, to clean your screen doors. You can use it to clean up small shards of glass and the hardest thing to clean up of all, glitter. Final tip for deep cleaning the easy way. And this last one, it's a doozy. It has to do with cleaning our vents. Ugh. Nobody enjoys doing that. And sometimes it's just unavoidable. We have to take them off the wall. We have to wash them, dry them, and put them back on. But one thing you can do so that you don't have to do that job very often is just to maintain them. And one thing that I have found that works really well is using an old makeup brush. You can just get in and brush in between the slats and it keeps it nice and clean. Another item you can use is those foam paint brushes. You know, the ones that you can get like five in a bag for like a dollar from the Dollar Tree. Those are awesome as well because the foam compresses and you can get right in between there. But for today, I'm gonna to be using this old makeup brush. Instead of throwing it away, I've repurposed it. So I'm gonna finish up with cleaning this one vent. Well, friends, we've made it to the end of the video. Thanks for joining me for Deep Cleaning the Easy Way. I hope that when you hear those two words together, deep cleaning, that they don't seem so frightening anymore. That not every day is spring cleaning. All we have to do is just do a little bit at a time and maintain what we already have in our homes. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting my channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll know every time I do a new video. I appreciate you and I look forward to seeing you at the next one. So until I see you again, stay tidy.